Going up to month 11. It's about six weeks since uh, the last video and you are watching a 55 gallon display with a bridged 34 gallon refugium. I bought nine acro frags so I'm just going through these at the moment just to record what they look like they're only two days old so you know I may lose some I don't, I don't know we'll see uh, just tested my nitrates and phosphates and because my refugium seems to be pretty efficient my nitrates and phosphates are at zero I don't I don't normally get zero yeah and uh, so I've turned my skimmer off tonight and tomorrow I need to take out quite a lot of the chato maybe half of it and therefore the refugium won't be as efficient and hopefully I'll get some phosphates and nitrates as you'll see later uh, I chuck in a shed load of food as well. I want that to to rot and create my phosphates and nitrates, please. I've been dosing. I had a really strange blip. Um, what happened? Yeah, I had zero nitrates, but I had a really high spike of phosphates, about 0.13. And... I guess that's because I had no nitrates, so therefore my chatomorpha wasn't growing. Uh, as soon as I started dosing, I started dosing salifert amino acids, and that, I think, may create nitrates or break down into nitrates, and therefore there were phosphates in there, and they, they allowed the chatomorpha to grow and down came my phosphates within a day actually i did actually i did chuck in some phosgard which normally doesn't do much but it seemed to get it down within a day so either uh, i took a bad measurement uh, and my phosphates weren't at 0.13 but anyway since then i have been dosing quite a lot of this amino acids which i probably shouldn't do but typically me uh, i love to dose as usual, I'm uh, dosing Kalkwasser, and on top of that, I dose two part uh, with magnesium. I don't know whether that's called three part. I don't know. Uh, I also got a dehumidifier. The reason I got one is because in winter it gets quite damp in uh, in this room with the fish tank. And if you're not careful, you get mould, uh, especially in the corners. So that has, so far, has solved that problem. I also hoped it might stabilise the humidity in the room so that the rate of evaporation out of the tank became stable. But it hasn't really done that. The evaporation rate fluctuates uh, and uh, that can create problems for me because I'm not using ATO auto top off oh by the way this frag is an old uh, frag it's probably about two or th maybe three months old actually and all that stuff to the right it's not very good colors uh, I don't know whether that's to do with nitrates or I've still got an iodine issue my iodine is double what it should be which isn't as bad as when it was a hundred times what it, sh it should be uh, yeah so that that frag is growing well but color wise it, it's uh, not exactly a brilliant color uh, and again this is a tricolor acro I've had that again for about three months and the one behind which is a I think it's a Montipora spongides uh, that's growing well, apart as you can see the top bit, uh, I left it out of the water for 15 minutes stupidly and uh, I got, you know, die back, uh, but it's it's coming back anyway and, and uh, hopefully that will regrow uh, to the top. By the way, these uh, dehumidifiers, I, I got one that is meant to be a quiet one, I think it's 37 
dBs or minus 37 dBs and I don't know if you can hear it in the background it's noisier than any part of the tank uh, and as I say that is a quiet one uh, what else is good about the dehumidifier yeah well it, it certainly reduced it you know the, the humidity big time uh, so that's really good and the condensation on the windows that's gone uh, it's it's not really cold outside it's it's been quite cold but it'd be interesting to see you know in a month or two when it gets a little bit colder uh, whether the condensation will still be on the window uh, I was also maybe I, I think if you've got a bigger dehumidifier then it might pull out more water because what would be good would be if it increased the rate of evaporation in the tank and therefore maybe you could dose more calc if you wanted to but the one I've got is uh, it's a low power one it's only about 130 watts so I think if you got a bigger one uh, the, the more powerful one that would that would obviously pull a lot more water out of the the air and uh, probably help with rate of evaporation out of your tank. As usual, if you've been watching, my zoas aren't great. Uh, I think zoas are a really good indicator, uh, especially lots of different types of zoas, then you can see when something is wrong. I mean, these, for example, I'm not quite sure why those aren't open. I don't know whether it's my zero nitrates, phosphates, or I've upped my lights as well my light intensities for the acropora and uh, I'm wondering whether those zoas were sulking with the bright light uh, but um, I don't think it is that I, th I think it's to do with iodine phosphate and nitrate they are my my problems at the moment I also pulled out my miracle mud actually I had uh, 15 pounds of miracle mud and I'm not very blaming the mud but uh, when I did pull the mud out, my iodine came down, whereas when I put the mud in, um, my iodine just didn't come down at all. So it has come down uh, substantially. Uh, now I've removed the mud. But, uh, yeah, may maybe it's not the mud, maybe it's something else. Yesterday also I bought some clean-up crew, uh, which is nice to have because... Uh, Again, when I put the mud in, <laughs> all, all my snails coincidentally uh, died, uh, along with all my hermit crabs as well. Uh, so I've not had any of those for about, I don't know, five weeks. I really miss the snails. I, I love seeing snails sort of munching around and moving around. Anyway, so I've got about 20 of the little blighters. I've got a big uh, Mexican turbo snail as well which I've managed to acclimate uh, correctly, or so far it's living and moving around. I've not had much uh, success with those normally uh, when I acclimate them. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm chuffed it's moving around, although it moves around at night. So I'm looking forward to that munching around, because I, I do have algae issues, there's no doubt about that. Uh, my refugium tries to compete, but at the top of the display tank, obviously where the par is very high. Uh, I've, got, uh, I've got bryopsis in particular at the top, which doesn't bother me that much. It's around the weir, it looks a bit ugly, but uh, it's not, it doesn't grow lower down where all the uh, frags and uh, corals are. So yeah, I, I just keep sort of uh, weeding it down, but uh, I'm hoping, I don't know, maybe one of the snails will eat it. Uh, or, or maybe, you know, as I get on top of these phosphates and nitrates and get everything in balance. It's, it's early days. I, I've only had the refugium about, I don't know, three months at most. So it's just finding its feet, really. It's getting some lovely little zooplankton. Zo zo zooplankton? Yeah, getting some lovely sort of critters in there and... and things that look like miniature jellyfish and or, you know little uh, tiny worms yeah really really love the refugium I can gaze at that yeah this stylophora by the this stylophora by the way when I dose those amino acids it, it uh, the polyp extension 
is really good, really good since I've been dosing uh, the amino acids in, uh, about two or three weeks I started and uh, yeah, I'm just showing you here, yeah, it's pretty minging at the top here. Uh, this I'll be cleaning at some point, I'm going to let the snails see what they do and then uh, get on top of that. Uh, this is my low light <clears throat> bird's nest. Polyp extension not great, again I think that's to do with uh, nitrates being really low. Uh, and maybe the light is too bright as well. I don't, I, there's nowhere to put it, there's no dark places in my tank. Uh, there is shading actually, you know, the acros, there is, you know, bad shading. I need to get some T5s, don't I? That's what everybody does, bungs in a load of T5s with their LEDs. Anyway, thanks for watching, that'll do for now, and uh, yep, cheers, have a good one.